Okay, here we have our initial setup. Um, this was this was random, randomly distributed using. Yeah, I don't even want to go into how I randomize it, but um, as you can see, a, yeah, okay. Well, the first big thing that actually stands out to me is the forge does not seem like the place to be in this setup. Um, it's gonna. It seems kind of like a superfluous platter, which I kind of like. Actually, we're going with six characters. This feels like six on a three platter um, game will lead to a lot of interaction, which will be fun. Um, the forge is going to be kind of like the proverbial Siberia. If you roll a six, you're going to have to spend some time moving across the um, the wasteland before you get to anything worth going to. I I hope for, for um, Rocking Horse Dream's sake that his Sir Gawain does not dismiss in on a six because that will make for some dull dull turns for Mr. Gawain. Um, the modern labyrinth, you know, you can see what it looks like. Um, one thing I want to note, I didn't mention earlier when I was going over kind of our opening teams that I don't have any um, ancient characters. That's not going to come into play too much because I sort of have this wild card adventure. So it's less of a deficit, I feel, for my team than his lack of future characters is for him. Really, it's not a big deal either way. You can you can totally win the game with all characters from one age. Um, although certain ages have different strengths. So especially in the base set, like there's not a lot of ranged fighting in the, the ancient age. Right? So you're gonna if you had all ancient age characters you might have a hard time, I think, towards the end game. Um, especially if they're their melee success is based on having cards. Though Spartacus, you know, he's he's a good melee fighter no matter what. Um, even base, he's got a white melee, three damage. That's great. Um, oh, I gotta I gotta um, introduce to you my my. my it's Saturday morning, which means two things. I shaved last night, but also that Greg sent me my characters and the map for our Duel of Ages game. I got Melina, the freedom fighter, strong-willed, may ignore any mental abilities she wishes, she ignores enemy tower of maneuver results. Stubborn, cannot use Tower of Desperation, cannot receive cards in trade from allies, but can give cards away. Pat Garrett, the Lawman. Garrett gains plus one hit with all attacks against dishonorable characters. Which... Doesn't look like he has any of those. Gains plus hit plus one hit with revolver, long pistol, and powder pistol. Increased range of all pistols by one, that's pretty handy. Spartacus the Gladiator. May use two equipped melee weapons in the same melee phase as two separate attacks. Spartacus's natural, ability, natural attack cannot be one of these weapons. The weapons can be used against the same or different targets. Annie Oakley the Trick Shot. Begins the game with one card. I like that. Extremely accurate shootist when able to prepare properly. Gains plus three ranged hit bonus if firing during the fire phase with the revolver or long rifle. I don't mind doing some pot shots here and there. If carrying a revealed revolver or long rifle, Annie gains plus three on any adventure involving aim or point. That could come in handy. Boris the mercenary. Fights fast and dirty, my kind of guy. Always attacks first in melee. Gains plus one hit with grenade, auto rifle, and auto pistol. Sir Gawain, the knight. Proud and noble Sir Gawain, the bravest of the knights of the round table, defender of King Arthur's lands and honor. The one man to answer the challenge of the green knight. Gains plus one hit and plus one damage with blade, swing, and thrust weapons. 
gains plus one hit with bow, brawler, and crossbow. Gains plus one damage with all melee attacks if raiding a living mount. So what's interesting is I have six characters and no future characters. Greg, I don't know if you can see those down there. He doesn't have any ancient characters, but he has three future characters, and I kind of tend to like the future characters. Alas, it shall not be. So this is the first turn of this game that is a match between north and south, humidity, not humidity, heat and water, dryness and water, I would say, yeah, dryness and moisture, and the beginning of the alphabet against the end of the alphabet. And it's going to begin with um, a simple die roll here. Uh, I have to choose who I'm going to dismiss in first. That's basically my first turn. And then it's over to Rocking Horse Dreams. I'm, I'm going to um, put in my two adventurers, my, who I feel are my two best adventurers. I think that's a good move for the beginning of the game. Um, and my my oligarchy agrees. Um, so we're going to start with Geronimo. He's he's a good adventurer because he's got some nice stats. And he's got the best speed I have. And so it goes into two. Let's see. He's colonial. This looks like a good place for colonial to go. Bank. Because he's can get at that labyrinth. And get us some cards to start out with. Um could actually count it up one. Yeah, that's obviously quicker than going this way from this other two over there. Um, all right. That's really too bad that the colonial, for me, that the colonial labyrinth is by all these buildings because he's got some nice advantages when it comes to other kinds of terrain, more natural kinds of terrain. He's a master of ambush, you know. Uh, so that's, that's too bad. But you know what? I can't have everything I want. I have to learn to accept the world um, as it is, or I'll just be a, a, I'll have a tangled heart full of blackness and, and um, bile. All right, so my, my next one's going to be Arden Glein. He doesn't have the speed of Geronimo, but nice thing about him is he can... Well, no, maybe I'll wait, because since he can go to any labyrinth and succeed, um, he's maybe not a good one to start with. It comes at five... So they'll do Marcus Aris instead because he, or no, I should do one of, I should do Sergeant Grit. Even though I don't love Sergeant Grit, um, we'll, one of the areas where we'll be competing adventure-wise is in the modern, modern age because we both have modern guys. So if I can get him closer to there first, um, that's better. Uh, I don't know. That just seems... To me. Since I'm on camera, I'm not consulting with my oligarchy. I'm flying solo. I hope I made the right decision. He got a two. I'm big on the twos today. And that's not bad. I think I'll go to this two, even though there's all this swamp he's going to have to get through, just because it's closer. Um, makes a lot of sense. This two uh, seems farther, and there's still terrain. So I guess I didn't really need to go into that. Okay, it's going to be Rocking Horse Dream's turn. I sent pictures... I'm going to send pictures of the initial setup, and I should actually take pictures of this. Um, we're not going to be watching each other's footage until I think the game is over, because that would make it unfair, because he could hear what's in my heart of hearts and use that to plan, um, and vice versa. So I think before we do anything else, we need to get Annie her starting card which is a throwing axe. And she doesn't get any bonuses on that, but that's still okay. And Greg doesn't get to know what that one is. Okay, where did she go? All right, to place them, I think I want No 
dishonorable characters over here. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, I think I'll just leave them in this order. Yeah, I like that. So let's see where Annie's gonna go. Bam, four. <clears throat> so she is colonial, and colonial is right there. And there's a four right there, which I think I like that. So we'll put her up there. Plus that puts her in contention with the modern Sergeant Grit, although he's going to go that way through all that murky swamp. <clears throat> and Sir Gawain is going to want to be ancient, which is over there. Slow crawl. Um, so let's hope for a one or a three. Let's see what he gets. Nice. Good karma. And Three up there. Sorry, you didn't see that. So the idea behind this is there are 17 cards here. I will put one joker down here. And now there are four cards here. Put that <clears throat> the second joker in there. And now this We'll go under this, and this is our timing mechanism for the game. After each of my turns, I'll flip one of these cards. When we get to the first joker, we will know that the game is about to end, and then there's a variable of five cards for when the game will end, when that second joker comes up. Here's the board as it stands. I don't know. We have Geronimo down there. He's colonial, so he has a pretty good start. I don't know. 